Hello again and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and we're going to be continuing the select query and today we're going to be doing some functions and concatenation of different fields together into one field which is a really nifty thing about uh, doing queries. So let's go on back to our Access database here and the first thing I'm going to go over is concatenation. What cat concatenation basically means is combining multiple fields into one field here. Okay, so I'm going to take the city, I'm going to take the state, I'm going to take the zip code. And let's say I want to put them all together into their one and into just one field. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to delete these for right now because I'm not going to need them. And I'm going to change this. I'm going to say that our new field, our new column that we want in our query is going to be called CSZ, which is short for city, state, and zip code. I'm going to follow this with a with a colon, and then I'm going to type in city, and then add a concatenation uh, mark here, which is which is the ampersand, which just basically means take the city, okay, the city, and add to it a quotation mark comma, space, quotation mark. And strings are, or text, are always held in quotation marks. Remember how before, when we were doing the filtering based upon the company name, we, we put the company name in parentheses. We put Metro Properties in parentheses. Well, we're doing the same thing here. We're putting comma, space, in parentheses, indicating that it's a string. So then I'm going to add another concatenation mark. Uh, and we want the state followed by another concatenation mark, quotation mark, space, another quotation mark, concatenation, and zip code. All right. Now I'm going to expand this out a little bit so you can see Access went ahead and put these brackets around city, state, and zip code. And essentially what that is is Access telling itself, hey, make sure you evaluate city as a field coming from one of these two tables which there's only one table that has city in it there's only one table that has state and there's only one table that has zip so it's not really important that we specify which table uh, just as long as city is by itself and is the only one in here and state is the only one in here and zip code if I had a city state and zip in another table on this query we would have to specify that table, but I'm not going to get into that just now. If we run into that, I'll definitely show you how to do that, though. So, here's our concatenated string, city, state, and zip code. And let's see what this looks like when we look at it. Well, you can see we've got the city concatenated with a, with a uh, comma, space, then the state, then a space, and the zip code. So isn't that neat? You can put all of it together into one field instead of having to have three separate fields like they were before. That's pretty nice, huh? All right, so that's how you concatenate different fields together into one. Now I'm going to take this back out here, and I'm going to actually get rid of a bunch of this. I'm going to take that out, because what I want to do now is, let's say I need to know how many of our customers are in a within a particular zip code. And let me just go back to the data here and I'm going to see that there's one of our customers named Metro Properties is in zip code 00 or I'm sorry 10025 and then there's Hamster Wheels at 95888 and then there's another Metro Properties at 10025. So I'm going to go back in here and I can see that there were two customers that had the zip code of 10025. Now let's say I want to find out how many specifically I want to get access to return to me a count so that I don't have to go in here and count it for myself. I mean, because this is kind of annoying. I have to go through. What if there are thousands of these records? How am I going to know how many records there are? Am I going to go through and count one, two, three, four? Well, access has a way of telling us how many records there are that have that particular zip code in there so that we don't have to count it ourselves. So I'm going to go, go back in here. I'm going to leave this criteria in here as 10025. 
for the zip code. So I want to show all of the customers that have 10025 as the zip code. Now, I'm going to go up here to the top right corner, and I'm in the Design tab, and I'm going to click on this button called Totals. Now, you'll see that I get this total column, or this total row, that shows up underneath both of my columns. And right now, they say Group By. I'm going to change the customer name from being a Group By to instead being a Count. Okay? Now, Essentially, what group by is, and this is kind of important, you need to know this, group by is saying take all of the customers and their zip codes, take all of the zip codes, and group each one of them together. So everybody that has a zip code of 10025, put them together. And then the same for any other zip codes. Any unique zip codes is going to be in their own group. And then I want to count how many are in that zip code group. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. I'm doing a count of how many customers are in this zip code. And when I run it, sure enough, we get two customers are in the zip code of 10025. All right, now let's say I want to do something else other than that. I'm going to do, uh, let's say, an I'm going to count how many employees there are. And what I did was, just so that you can see this, I'm going to open up the addresses table, and I just added an employee's um, value here, 5, 6, and 7. So there are 5 employees at this particular office, 6 at this office, and 7 at that office. And that's obviously not going to be, uh, that's probably not the right location to be keeping track of how many employees are at that particular office, but just for our purposes, we're going to keep track of it there. So I'm going to go to the employees, I'm going to drop it down in here, and if I just did a quick little view with the group by, you'll notice that I have five employees and seven employees. And you'll notice that no longer is my count accurate. And that's because it's still, it, you have to understand, it's grouping by the number of employees as well, which in one of them, there were five employees, and in another one, there were seven employees. It can't group 5 and 7 together because they're their own separate groups. So it's making one group with 5 employees and it's making another group of 7 employees. So what I need to do is I, I, I want to find out instead of, um, instead of that, let's take and do a summation. And a sum is, of course, an addition. So I'm adding how many employees total are in the zip code of 10025. And what we should get is 12. That's because 7 plus 5 is 12. And there's a count of two, uh, two companies that are in that zip code. And just so you can see, if I change this back to a group here, so the customer names are grouped, we still get the 12, okay? So, all right, other than a sum, what are some of the other functions we can do? How many, what is the average number of employees? Six, remember, average of five and seven is six. And what's the minimum number of employees? Well, that would be five, okay? And of course, what is the maximum number of them? Seven. All right, good. And of course, we've done count. I'm not going to go over um, these other ones. Just understand, I would avoid first and last. Um, you may find them in a query somewhere, but they become really troublesome because essentially what Axis is doing is it's saying, when I find a column that has, uh, you know, or once I find a row that, that matches this, what's the first number that I find in this field? And that can get really, really messy because access isn't always accurate with the way in which it finds its records. So that's not a very reliable way to go about trying to, to find your data using a first or last. Usually you want to use either a min or a max in order to get uh, a value that you want for your field. All right, so that's concatenation and totals in your query. Next up, we, we've got some good stuff in store, and I can't wait to see you there.